It's 1992 and you have just received a brand new 486 with four whole megabytes of RAM. And you want to put this beauty through its paces. But Solitaire's kind of gotten boring and no one in the world knows how to play Minesweeper, even to this day, if you ask me. So it's kind of, you know, you've got all this power but nothing to do with it. But then on the front of a PC magazine, you see a floppy disk with the title Wolfenstein 3D. And this little disc is just what you've been looking for. Because for the first time, no longer are you controlling your player from behind, um, like from a godlike position. Rather, you are looking through your player's eyes. And the only thing in front of you is your weapon, be that the knife or a gun. It is a completely different experience to all the games that have gone before. So in this lesson, we're going to set up our player character so that you can move around the world that we made in our last one. So let's have a look at our WWSS and then we'll get into our demos. So get your Godot project up and running and it should look something like this if you did what I suggested in our Must May Might last lesson and built out your walls a little bit more. Hopefully even you've gone a lot further than I've gone here because I've just got a very boring box. But this is where we're going to get started. So first thing we need to do is create a brand new scene and the way we do that is we come up to the top here and we've got our world scene here. Next to it there's a plus sign. We can just click on that to make a new scene. So let's click on our plus sign to create a brand new scene and this is going to be our character, our player. So the node we're going to use is not one of these ones here. We're going to click on other node and we're going to search for character body 3D and hit enter. Now we've got this character body 3D in our scene. Brilliant. So now we need to um, give it a mesh basically so that we can um, interact with our player and also with the world uh, around them. So the way we do that is very similar to um, how we do it for the, the floor and the walls in a way. So we're going to go to our character body 3D. We're going to click on the plus and then we're going to look for a mesh instance just like we did for our floor. And this mesh instance we want to be a capsule shape. That's really common for when we're doing things like players and things that interact with the world. Now one thing you'll notice is that half of it's below the floor. So if we have a look at our transform we should be able to just move this up. So if we change Y by, I'm not actually sure, um, how far yet, one meter. So we can change our Y by one meter and that now means our player is basically standing on the floor instead of stuck within it. So let's save this where we're at, we're going to call it player. Um, let's also rename our character body 2D node to player. Um, and next thing we're going to do is add a camera to this. So the way we can do that is again, we just go and select our player node, then we click on the plus sign and we search for camera 3D and attach that to our player there. So if you look at our camera now, you can see where it's positioned. Now that's a bit lame, right? It's down at the floor. So let's just drag this up so it's sort of at eye height like that. Now we have got our player and our uh, viewport or our, the way we're going to look at our screen or our world around us is from a camera that's positioned at our eyes, right? So a first person perspective. Let's save that awesome source. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is actually get that into our world, play around with some environment settings. Um, we also need to do a script as well. So there's still a few steps to go here. Um, we're not quite there yet. I think maybe the next thing we should do is going to be our script. So our next step is, is to create a script. So the way we're going to do that, you want your player scene, you're going to click on that root node that's called player, and then we're going to click on the little scroll thing with a green plus sign. And this brings up a little um, dialogue box. Now, one thing it has is these templates, and we're actually going to use our template this time. Often I don't use it, but in this particular instance, it's really close to what we actually want. So we're going to use our template, and we're going to call it player.gd and open it up. And that gives us this um, bit of script that is already set up for us. Now up the top here it says extends character body 3D. That's because this player root node that we created in the top left hand side is a character body 3D. That's our root node. So our script that is attached to that node is going to inherit the properties of that node. So straight away we've got access to things like move and slide which is to do with that character body and how it interacts with the world around it. Um, we've also got a bunch of variables and things but 
but we're gonna build on it. So come up to where we've got these variables already and we're gonna type in const because we wanna make another const and we're gonna add one called turn speed and that's gonna be equal to 0.05, so quite a low number. If this was one, we'd spin around so fast you'd get dizzy. So 0.05 is what we want. Um, that's the top bit pretty much done. We can actually scroll all the way to the bottom now and above our move and slide is where we're gonna be doing things next. So the first thing we wanna do, um, let's just make sure we get to the right position. Uh, actually, no, that would be there. So if uh, input dot is action pressed, and what we're looking for is UI left, what do we wanna do? So we put a little colon, go down to our next line. So if, our, um, oh, hang on, that doesn't need a colon there, sorry, there we go. If um, input is action pressed, you are left. So what that is saying is if someone presses the button that we have mapped to be called UI left, we wanna do something. So what do we wanna do? We want to self, self.rotate. So this should make sense, I assume. We wanna rotate our Y axis by our turn speed, right? And then we also need to do something very similar for the next one. And if input dot is action is pressed, UI right, that should be pretty self-explanatory, shouldn't it? Colon, down to the next line, and we're gonna do self dot rotate. How's this one gonna be different? So it's still the Y. How do we make it go uh, in the opposite direction, right? So um, the way we're gonna do that is a negative turn speed. Right, does that make sense? So if we press the left button, we're gonna go at our turn speed. So it's gonna go in the direction that would normally happen. But if we press the right button, it's gonna go negative turn speed. So it turns the opposite way. And that's pretty much it, I think, for our script. So I'm gonna save that script. Um, and I think we're probably just about ready to test. Who am I kidding? We're not just about ready to test. We haven't even added the player to the world or, or set up our environment. So let's, pardon me, let's do that. So go back to your world scene. Here it is here. And all we're gonna to do to get our player into our world scene is just drag it. So down the bottom here, oh, it's just above my head, there's our player.tscn. I'm gonna click on that and just drag it over and drop it into the middle of, uh, of the world that we made. So now the player's in there, but there's one more thing, two more things, yeah, one and two, they're related, that we need to do. So we can see our world here fine. And that's because Godot 4 has built in environment properties for when we're working on our game. But this lighting and all of that, it doesn't automatically go into our game, but there's a really easy way to sort that out. So it actually has um, some sort of test properties and things like that. If you come up to the top of your 3D view when you've got the world selected and you'll see these three dots, if you click on those, it gives us the preview sun and preview environment, which is what's giving this view to the world that we're working in now. You can just go add sun to scene, click on those three dots again, add environment to scene, save it again. Now we should be ready to test our game. So let's go and click on our play button and see what we get. All right, so there's a reason I'm falling through the floor and that's because I forgot to set up a collision shape for my player. And so now they're falling infinitely. So let's close that window. Let's go back to our player. Let's click on our mesh instance. Do you remember how we um, automatically sorted out our collision shape and everything? So you just come up to where it says mesh, click on that, click on uh, create, hang on, which one is it for this? Un momento por favore. Simplified Convex Collision Simpling. I'm pretty sure it's that one. So we wanna use that, which is now given us a collision shape. So let's save that again. Now let's go and run it and see if we fall through the floor. Ah, good. So uh, I think, I, let me just have a quick look at uh, our project settings. Cause I just wanna have a look at um, what keys I've got. All right, I've not made any uh, keys yet, so that's all right. Let's go back into the game. Where is it? There it is. So that should mean that my arrow keys, yep, so my arrow keys turn me and move me around. So that's the bulk of what we want to get done today. So 
have a look at the uh, must may might one of the things in there is to think about how you might be able to get the WASD controls set up but have a have a look through the rest of the info then rewind and work your way through right the way to use these is to watch the whole thing so that you get the context and then go back and work on the tasks if you try and do it as you're watching it the first time it can be a bit harder so my recommendation is watch it all then go back to the parts you need to go back to all right let's look at our must make all right so what you must get done is you've got to get that player scene created the script created and drag your player into your world scene but if you don't set up the lighting and environment you won't be seeing anything so make sure you do that as well what you may like to do is continue building out your world you should really be doing a little bit of that every single lesson just to make sure you don't have a whole ton of work to do right at the end and what you might like to do is have a look at the input map in the project settings and see if you can work out how to change our controls from being arrows to the WASD keys well, if you got all of that done, you now have a player that can walk around your ever-expanding world. Good job. Next time, we're going to start bringing our world to life by adding textures to all of those meshes that we were making for our world. So that, what we're going to do is we're going to make it look like a proper room in Wolfenstein next week. And the quote I would like to leave you with this week is from one of my favourites, uh, Epictetus. And this is one of my all-time favourite quotes. And that is, what is learned without pleasure is forgotten without remorse. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.